I think we do need to be worried about the state of our uh, security of our embassies abroad and our consulates abroad. One of the things the Canadian government has adopted, particularly during the last six years, is the fact that they co-locate with a lot of other foreign consulates and embassies. For example, in Iraq, in the Green Zone, they were co-located with the British Embassy. So therefore, they used the British Embassy security team uh, they just paid their share of the money towards it. There was no assessments done, no risk assessments done for the location of the embassy because they believed that the, the British had already done all that and hired the security. So really, we were operating in, in Baghdad with virtually no information regarding how we were supposed to protect our diplomats. The report stated that the, uh, the security was acceptable in, in, in certain uh, countries, but those countries were not listed to my knowledge. The big issue here is uh, because of our government foreign policy now, we're attracting the attention of quite a lot of uh, fundamentalist, uh, Islamic fundamentalist terrorist groups. We've been threatened numerous times through uh, the internet and other, other media. Uh, so we, we've got to anticipate that one day there's going to be an attack launched against one of our diplomatic missions somewhere overseas. <clears throat> and we are in some pretty bad places around the world at this particular time. So one of the things we have to bear in mind is we have to have threat assessments done of each of these high-risk vulnerable locations. And it's not just looking at the building and how the building is protected. It's what type of security do our diplomatic staff need? Do they actually live within the consulate or the embassy, or do they travel to and from on a daily basis from another location? In which case then we've got the problem of the potential for kidnapping if they're using the same routes every day. Also, it's, all, it's down to the fact that we need intelligence to be able to, to plan our security. And there seems to be a lack of, of the development of this type of, uh, this type of intelligence to know, are we a threat? Is there a possibility there could be an ambush? Is there a possibility of a suicide attack against our missions? And then we have to make sure that we've got the security beefed up to be able to deal with each of the, one of the, each of the identifiable threats. It's, it's strange that this report happened to, happened to come out during the, uh, the general election process. Uh, obviously, the Canadian government at this time has got other things on its mind and it want, does not want to be reminded of all these, very issue, it, all these various issues. And the protection of our diplomatic facilities and diplomatic staff is a high priority. And I think it, uh, the way it was released at this particular time, instead of waiting until after the general election, uh, really was to put pressure on the, the sitting government at the time to be able to answer these questions and further detract them from their, uh, their election processes and plans.